Okay, let's say you have the sudden urge to show your friends how Feynman's integration trick works. In that case, this is the integral you'd most likely show them. Well, because this integral is pretty much famous for being the introductory integral for Feynman's trick, and it's pretty easy to solve using that technique. But what if your friends want you to show them a different solution development, one that doesn't involve Feynman's trick? Well, refer them to this video, because I'm going to be solving this integral two different ways. One is the Feynman way, and then I'm going to solve it the non-Feynman way. So, for starters, we'll call the integral i for reference purposes, and we'll define the integral function i of some parameter alpha as the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the alpha minus 1 divided by log x. And the reason for introducing the parameter alpha as an exponent in the x variable is that if we differentiate partially with respect to alpha, the term x to the alpha, we get x to the alpha, the repeated function, times the logarithm of the constant base, which is x in this case, in the alpha world anyway. And this logarithmic term is pretty useful for dealing with the pesky logarithmic term in the denominator, because, well, it'll cancel out. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We differentiate with respect to the parameter alpha, we switch up the order of the integration and differentiation operators, and that gives us the integral from 0 to 1 of now the partial derivative with respect to alpha because of the Leibniz rule of x to the alpha minus 1 divided by log x dx. So that means we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 by log x times the partial derivative with respect to alpha of x to the alpha minus 1 dx. Okay, cool. So that means we have the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 by log x times x to the alpha times log x dx, where the logarithm terms cancel out, and we're left with this friendly little integral of x to the alpha dx, which is very easy to solve. We just apply the power rule, and we have x to the alpha plus 1 divided by alpha plus 1, with the limits being 0 and 1. In the limit as x goes to 0, we get a big bad 0, and as x approaches 1, 1 to something is 1 anyway. So we're left with the derivative of i with respect to alpha being 1 by alpha plus 1. Now that we have the derivative of i completely in terms of the parameter, we can recover the integral function by integrating with respect to the parameter. Okay, so on the left-hand side, again, I have i of alpha. And on the right-hand side, I have the logarithm of alpha plus 1 plus some constant of integration c that I now have to determine. And for that... Recall that the integral function i of alpha is the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the alpha minus 1 divided by log x dx. So if I plug in alpha equal to 0, well, that would give me x to the 0, which is 1. So I have 1 minus 1 in the numerator. That means the entire thing collapses to a big fat 0, meaning that i of 0 is 0. So using this information, I can write... On the left-hand side, I have i of 0, which is 0. On the right, I have log 0 minus 1, which is 1, plus c. And since log 1 is 0, 2, that means that c is conveniently equal to 0. So this implies that i of alpha is the logarithm of alpha plus 1. Okay, cool. And what exactly was my target integral? Well... We were interested in the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus 1 divided by log x dx. So that means alpha equals 1 for the target case. So this implies that the target integral i equals the logarithm of 2. Okay, cool. And now for the non-Feynman way. Now for the second solution development. But before we begin, I have something very, very important to ask all of you. Is your coffee mug which is essential for your morning coffee, holomorphic or not? If not, check out the link in the description. Oh, and thank you. Thank you everyone who supported the channel by viewing, by liking, by sharing. Thank you anyone who supported me on Patreon. Thank you anyone who's bought any of my merchandise. I've recently started this new venture and I want to thank each and every one of you. This is how I make my living, and yeah, I make my living solving hard integrals, and I really, really, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. And 
I am genuinely happy running this YouTube channel and it makes me incredibly happy every time you guys like my video, you comment on my videos, you watch my video. This really does mean a lot to me and thank you so much. Now for the solution development. So we have this integral and let's make a substitution. A nice substitution here would be letting log x equal negative u. In this case, as x approaches 0, we have log x approaching negative infinity. So that means u would approach infinity. And as x approaches 1, we have log 1, which is 0. So u approaches 0. Also, this equation implies that x equals e to the negative u. And this implies that dx equals negative e to the negative u du. So that means my integral in the u world is an integral from infinity to 0 of x, which is e to the negative u minus 1 divided by negative u e to the negative u du again with a negative sign. So these two negatives do cancel out, but I, I would like to switch up the limits of integration because they look weird. And I can get rid of the resulting negative sign by just performing some rearrangement in the numerator after multiplying out these two terms. So I'll get e to the negative u first minus e to the negative 2u divided by u du. Okay, so how do we solve this integral now? Well, we could make use of an integral representation for 1 by u, which is which can be expressed as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative s u d s. Okay, so that means i is now an integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u minus e to the negative 2u times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative su ds du. And because these functions out here are independent of the s variable, we can take them inside the integration operator with respect to s and write this now as the double integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative u minus e to the negative 2 times u e to the negative s u integration with respect to s first and then with respect to u. And because all I have here are exponential functions with negative arguments, there are no problems regarding continuity or boundedness and convergence. So that means I can switch up the order of integrations here and integrate first with respect to u and then with respect to s. This is pretty useful because that means I have a Laplace transform at hand. What I have here is the integral from 0 to infinity of the Laplace transform of e to the negative u minus e to the negative 2u, which we know is a function of the s parameter, and I have this integration with respect to s as well. Okay, so we know exactly what the Laplace transform of e to the a times t is, or in this case u, that would be 1 by s plus a with the negative sign here. Okay, so that means I have the integral from 0 to infinity of what exactly I have 1 by s plus 1 minus 1 by s plus 2 integration with respect to s. And this is pretty easy to evaluate. I have the logarithm of s plus 1 minus the logarithm of s plus 2 with the limits being 0 and infinity. Okay, so using the properties of the logarithm, I have log s plus 1 divided by log s plus 2. And again, the limits here are 0 and infinity. So what happens in the limit as s approaches infinity? Well, let me just write this here as s plus 1 logarithm, s plus 1 by s plus 2. And I can write this as the limit as s approaches infinity of the logarithm of dividing upstairs and downstairs by the s parameter. I have 1 by 1 by s plus uh, 1 by 2 plus s. So as s approaches infinity, this thing and this thing crashes to 0. I have log 1, which is a big fat 0. That means I'm left with negative log 1 by 2 in the limit as s approaches 0, of course. And this, of course, is the same thing as log 2. 
which agrees with our result using Pineman's trick. That was pretty cool. Let me know in the comment section which solution development you liked more. For me, actually, this is hard for me to, to decide. I mean, Feynman's trick is the coolest integration technique in my opinion, but this application is sort of a beginner level application for it, but it's still pretty cool. And I liked uh, the Schwinger parameterization over here. Yeah, I'm going to go with method number two, the non Feynman way this time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.